Greetings, my friend. We are all interested in the future, for that is where you and I are going to spend the rest of our lives. And remember, my friend, future events such as these will affect you in the future. You are interested in the unknown, the mysterious, the unexplainable. That is why you are here. And now, for the first time, we are bringing to you the full story of what happened on that fateful day. Five, four, three, two, one. Main engine start, zero, and lift off of the Atlas V with curiosity. See clues to the planetary puzzle about life on Mars. The Mars Science Laboratory, or Curiosity Rover, is the latest addition to the Mars Exploration Program, and it's scheduled to land on the Martian surface on August 6. Compared to its predecessors, Spirit and Opportunity, the Curiosity rover is massive in scale, weighing in at 1,984 pounds, 176 of which come from scientific instrumentation alone. Many of the instruments on board are analytical chemistry tools which will play a critical role in uncovering the habitability of life on Mars. We visited NASA's Jet Propulsion Laboratory in Pasadena, California to talk to Ashwin Basavada, the Mars Science Laboratory Deputy Project Scientist to find out more about Curiosity's mission goals, its array of chemical instruments, and the role chemistry plays in the search for life on other planets. The Mars Science Laboratory mission has a goal of understanding whether its landing site on Mars was ever a habitable environment, a place that could have supported microbial life. Curiosity is really a geochemical experiment that we're sending to Mars. A whole laboratory of chemical equipment is on this rover. Uh, primarily because the, the way we're going to assess habitability with this rover is to drill into rocks and analyze the material from those rocks uh, in, in very sophisticated analytical chemical instruments. The long-term ob objective of the mission is to drive from where we land up inside Gale Crater and begin to sample layer by layer the clay minerals that are there, then the sulfate minerals that are there, and then the dusty layers above that to hopefully piece together this early history of Mars when it went from a more wetter environment to a drier environment. Scientists hope to reach the mound at Gale Crater within a year of landing, but it's estimated that the primary goal of this mission will take several years to accomplish. In the meantime, if the rover finds that the landing site is habitable, a more advanced life detection mission would follow. Testing for habitability requires extremely advanced technical equipment, so let's peer under the hood of the rover to take a look at the incredible array of chemically inclined instruments. These devices are the next best thing to blasting a team of trained analytical chemists to the Martian surface. Atop Curiosity's mass, it's two HD cameras that are capable of producing stereoscopic 3D images. There are also four individual navigational cameras that help scientists move around. That big pink circle at the top of the head may look like an eye, but ironically it's actually a laser blaster of sorts, but not quite like the ones found in B-movies. The technique it uses is called laser-induced breakdown spectroscopy. The Mars rover focuses a laser through a telescope on a target sample of dirt within 20 feet, creating a small spark. The light emitted from that spark is then read or analyzed by a spectrometer, which can detect light between ultraviolet and the infrared wavelengths. Through studying the light emission, scientists can better understand the chemical composition of the soil on Mars. This is one of the many spectrometers packed onto the rover, but I'll let Ashram tell you about the rest. The second uh, instrument that comprises our analytical chemistry lab is called SAM, Sample Analysis at Mars. It's a GCMS and a tunable laser spectrometer. Its inlets are here, and we drop powdered sample into it and do an evolved gas experiment. Samples are pyrolyzed in a cup, the gas is evolved off, and we sample that gas with a mass spectrometer. This mass spectrometer goes out to uh, Dalton units of 600, much larger capability than we've ever done on Mars, and specifically to look at these long chain organic molecules if they're there on Mars. Uh, we also then use a GC to look at molecular components. Uh, and then finally, we send the gas up to a tunable laser spectrometer, which uses a laser tune uh, right near the absorption lines of water and methane and CO2 uh, to look in detail at the abundances and isotopic uh, ratios of those elements. One of our two big analytical chemistry instruments is called CHEMIN, Chemistry and Mineralogy. It's an X-ray diffraction experiment. It brings along an X-ray tube, shines that X-ray tube through powdered uh, rock that we acquire with our drill, X-ray diffraction rings are generated on a CCD and we send those uh, images back 
and we can uniquely determine the mineralogy of the rocks and soils that we're seeing. We've never been able to do this on Mars before to uniquely determine mineralogy as opposed to elemental chemistry. The final spectrometer that we have on this rover is located on the end of the arm. It's called an alpha particle x-ray spectrometer. Bring along a little radioactive support, uh, source and then uh, emitting gamma rays and then receiving x-ray emission from the samples. Two different x-ray spectroscopy techniques looking at the emission from the samples and figuring out what elements are in those samples. All these tools combine to make Curiosity a very effective interplanetary chemistry lab. As the NASA Mars Science Laboratory explores the uncharted territories of Mars' landscape, its discoveries will impact the future of Mars missions as well as provide insight into the search for life on other planets. As we get to know Mars better through the Curiosity rover's lab instruments, chemistry could help make Mars seem a little less alien. Ba-da-ba-da-ba-da-ba-da 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 Ba-da-ba-da-ba-da-ba-da